what this tells us is that this mass is creating a torque um, that would be the same as the torque of a 30 newton force that was one meter from the pivot. So they told you to choose the hinge as the pivot point. Of course, you can choose whatever you want here because it's not moving again at the start. Good. Oh, we're ready for part C. using Newton's second law in the vertical component. And you've already put in the signs. So again, I'm going to put in a dot to show that this is just the magnitude now. This is up, and these two are down. I think there's a problem here, because I think that you've left out one of the vertical forces. Oh, I have. That's true. I never put it into my diagram. Ah, there we go. Right, well, we really don't know what direction it's in. So actually, what I would, what I, um, there's a couple different ways to attack this, but I think what I, the method I would like the best here is, I'm just not going to put a dot on top of this variable, and that means that this includes both a magnitude and a sign. So we'll just solve and see whether this comes out positive or negative, and that will tell us. So we don't really have to take a guess, we'll just, we just won't decide the sign on our own, and we'll see what the equation tells us the sign is. That's the way I like to do it, although that's not the way instructors usually do it. Maybe I should do the way your instructor is going to do it. How did your instructor do this? Eh. Eh, I'll do it this way. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're not even going to take a guess as to what the direction is. We'll, we're not putting any dots, so this will, the sign will tell us what this comes out to be. Now, you saw that uh, this is not supposed to be moving still. Yeah, they say we're not moving, so no acceleration. All right. saying that the hinge force is in the y direction because that's the only component it has. So I'm going to say the hinge force.
first of all, you might want to erase this equation because that was the equation without the inch force. All right, well, the reason that we're stuck here is that we haven't done all the things that we did on the last problem to, to keep moving through this. So what you did here is you used Newton's second law in the y component, and then we got stuck because we have two unknowns. Well, what you did on the previous problem then is that you did a, di a different Newton's second law. Yeah. That's right. talk about that for a second. You're doing well. You just made one little mistake. So now we're using the net torque equation. And again, it's not moving, so we can put in an acceleration of zero. And again, you've already put in the signs, so these variables just stand for magnitudes. So I put in the dots for that. So the torque from the forearm, well, we assume that the weight is in the center of mass over here. So its distance from the pivot is half of 0.3, so that's 0.15. And then the weight is mg. You already figured out the torque from the weight. I think you just made a, a small error with the bicep. So you've got, I think you just made a mistake with the distance. You just wrote down oh, the wrong thing. Oh, it's 0.03. Right. Yeah. Not 0.3. <laughs> That would be force times distance. Now, all of these forces are perpendicular to the, uh, the r vector that we could draw, so we don't need to worry about taking any sine theta terms here. 